Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> so you're back for more, eh? Can't get enough of horror, eh? Well, I'll give you your dime's worth this time. <laughs> yep, it's me. Your host, the Crypt Keeper. Hmm, what chiller can I tell you that will make your blood run cold and the hair on your neck crawl? Ah, I know just the one. This is a real spine tingler. <laughs> I call it affectionately bargain in death. My story has its beginning on a cool October evening in 1928. In their room in the dormitory of Loganwood Medical College, two young students sit dejectedly, their faces sullen. What can we do, Mel? Unless we raise some money, we won't be able to pay our laboratory fees. And without that lab course, we can't continue with our studies. Dissecting those cadavers is required for anatomy credit. Christ, I don't know stiffs cost so much. That's what the lab fee covers, you know. Yeah, I know. Say, what if we supplied our own corpse? Huh? Oh, you mean? Don't look so shocked, Sid. It's been done before. We just have to dig up a fresh one in the town cemetery. Steal a body? Rob a grave? Either that or we don't become doctors, Sid. Take your choice. <laughs> now that we've met Sid and Mel and heard their problem, <laughs> let's look into the other second scene of our grisly little yarn. <laughs> this is taking place far across town at almost the same moment. It's crazy, Alex. Absolutely crazy. I won't agree to it. But it will work, George. I know. I saw this drug can do. We need the money, don't we? Yes, of course. But to give up everything, start all over? With $20,000 of insurance money. Is that a lot of money, Alex? An awful lot. All you have to do is shoot yourself with this stuff in your, into your arm. It cuts down your pulse and heartbeat your entire metabolism to such a point that the best doctor couldn't tell whether you're really dead or not. And uh, don't worry about air. There'll be enough in the casket for the time you'll be in it. Then after they bury you, I'll come dig you up. Since I'm the beneficiary of your life insurance policy, they'll have to pay me the $40,000. You're insured for them, and we split it. I don't know. It sounds good, but I'm afraid. Suppose, suppose there's a hitch. Don't be a fool, George. What can go wrong? Suppose the insurance company suspects. How can they? It'll look like heart failure. I'll be at home with the perfect alibi. No one else has any motive. How long will the effects of the drug last? 36 hours. You'll be unconscious. I'll make sure the funeral is rushed. There will be no lying in state. No embalming. If you take it early in the morning and they bury you the next day, I'll get you out that night. 36 hours. Simple. Well, what do you say for $20,000? Hmm. Seems like everybody's got problems. Well, Let's hurry back across town and see what Sid and Mel have decided. All right, Mel. I I I'll do it. Atta boy, Sid. We'll get old Clem to help us. He'll do anything for money. <laughs> the plot sickens, hey, kiddies? As for Alex and George, surely you must have anticipated. I'll agree, Alex. But it's against... My better judgment. Don't worry about it, George. I'll take care of everything. Here's the hypodermic and the drug. Take a full shot. And for God's sake, get rid of the bottle and needle before the stuff takes effect. You'll have about ten minutes. I I'll be careful, Alex. Don't worry. So, that's the situation, fiends. Like it? Good. Now for the complications. 
Ready? Here goes. The next morning, George's landlady discovers his body. Ah! A doctor is summoned by the hysterical woman. This man is dead. Looks like heart failure. Must have happened earlier this morning. Did he have any relatives? No, only a friend. I'll go f for him. Alex receives the bad news. What? George dead? Good Lord, what a shock. I better come back with you and make some arrangements. <laughs> he was such a good man. Such a good man. Alex arranges George's funeral. But it's customary to wait several days. No, George wouldn't have wanted it that way. The funeral will be held tomorrow in the afternoon. That evening in their dormitory room. Look, Sid, we're in luck. Some poor guy across town died this morning. They're burying him tomorrow afternoon. Come, let's go see Clem. We'll dig up the body tomorrow night. Sid and Nell find Clem, the rather stupid college handyman, and explain their plan. Well, I don't know, fellas. Uh, digging up a corpse, that's kind of scary business. We'll make it worth your while, Clem. Say, five dollars. Well, for, for five dollars, I'm, I'm not. Good. Meet us tomorrow night. Pray the tools. The next day, toward late afternoon, George, under the influence of the drug, is laid to rest. He was a good man. Lower the coffin. After George's casket is lowered into the yawning black pit, the gravedigger steps forward. Come on, Zeke. Let's get it over with. It's getting done. Sure thing, Hank. From a distance, Alex, George's best friend and beneficiary, smiles at the soft, crawling earth. It's shoveled into George's grave. <laughs> Won't you be surprised, George, <laughs> when the drug wears off tonight and I don't show up? <laughs> when Alex returns to his rooming house, a stranger is waiting for him. My name is Fogarty. Uh, I'm from Cosmopolitan Life. Are you Alex Lawrence? That's me. You are the beneficiary in the $40,000 policy of the recently deceased George Arkman? Yes, why? Anything wrong? No, we've examined a certificate of death. Everything seems to be in order. Well, what do we want to see about me then? Why, to present you with this check, Mr. Lawrence. Here you are. Oh, 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 uh, I, I, I thank you. As Darkness blankets the town and little drab-looking cemetery. Alex Lawrence hastily packs. Forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand. I'm rich. Rich. Meanwhile, deep down under the moldy black earth in the cemetery, something stirs. George is coming too. <laughs> where, where, where am I? Oh, oh, oh! Now I remember. Oh, oh my god, I'm in a coffin! <laughs> Buried alive! <laughs> George reaches up to the satin line lid of his underground prison. <laughs> I can't budge it! Oh, oh lord, how long can I last in here? <laughs> Where's Alex? Why don't he come? At that moment, Alex stands in a used car lot, surveying a shiny blue convertible. I'll take it. Can I drive it off the lot? Just as soon as you fill out the necessary papers, sir. Will you step into the office? Later that night as George lies buried six feet below the cemetery's gravestone bedecked surface. <sighs> Give it out. <laughs> That's much longer. Oh God, <laughs> where's Alex? Slowly, the gate of the deserted cemetery swings open, its rusted hinges screaming in protest. Three figures enter. Come on, this way fast! Uh, I don't like this, how this know-how. Shh, Clem, remember, the five books! 
gingerly seated male. The two medical students make their way across the gray mound to the fresh one. Here it is! Okay, Clem, start digging. Uh-huh. Down below, George hears a muffled thud as Clem's spade cuts into the dark soil. <gasps> it must be Alex. Hurry, Alex, hurry. I'm suffocating. Little by little, Clem's spade gouges out an ever-deepening hole as the minutes tick by. Just a little deeper, Clem. Just a little. Uh-huh. Hurry, Alex. Hurry up! Uh. Far across town, the motor of the blue convertible hums as Alex at the wheel guides it out of the lot. Good luck, sir. Hope you like the bus. Yeah, thanks. The hollow boom of Clem Spade striking the coffin echoes across the deserted cemetery. Hurry, pry up the lid. Here, here's a crowbar. Uh-huh. Clem slips into the sharp edge of the crowbar under the lid and presses down. The coffin shudders, then the lid gives way. It's coming loose! Whip it up, Clem! Uh-huh. George, gasping for air, covered with perspiration, sits both <laughs> upright in the coffin. Clem's eyes widen as he screams, Ah! Good Lord! Alex, in his new shiny blue convertible, is hitting 80 as he leaves town on the road that skirts the cemetery. <laughs> Hope you're comfortable in there, George. Suddenly, the two figures loom up before him, scampering along the road. Look out! <laughs> Alex swerves to avoid hitting the frightened, raiding students, while the car hurtles across the road towards the cemetery fence. <laughs> Later, in the dark corner of a local bar, Sid and Mel compose themselves with several shots of hard liquor. Lord, if I didn't see it with my own eyes, I would have believed it. That corpse actually sat up. And the poor guy in the convertible, he tried to avoid hitting us and killed himself. Finally, Sid and Mel return to their room as they open the door. The less said about tonight, the better. Gee, I wonder what happened to Clem. Here I is, been waiting upon you. Clem? That'll be five bucks, please. That's what you promised me for the body. Good Lord, Sid, look. The two medical students stare in horror at the prostrate body of George Ackman stretched out on the floor, its head crushed from the blow of the crowbar. <laughs> yep, Aunt Clem really came across by George, and Sid and Mel had the stiff they needed. As for Alex, well, he's pretty blue from car pain. <laughs> That's what happens when you get all wrapped up in something. Now, I'll turn you over to the federal galoon to take the vault keeper, who's waiting to relate his terror tale tale with you. With some